ओके गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट इन द लास्ट वीडियो वी वर डिस्कसिंग अबाउट पॉपुलेशन डायनेमिक्स द लेसन हाईलाइट्स एंड द इंट्रोडक्शन ऑफ द चैप्टर एज वेल एज वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द डिस्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ पॉपुलेशन इन द वर्ल्ड एरियाज ऑफ हाई डेंसिटी एरियाज ऑफ मीडियम डेंसिटी एंड एरियाज ऑफ लो डेंसिटी इन द प्रीवियस क्लासेस एंड ऑल्सो वी डिस्कस्ड अबाउट द फैक्टर्स वी हैव सीन the distribution of population throughout the world with the high density population region medium density and the low density population region okay so in the world map so <clears throat> we also discussed about the important factors that controls the population throughout the world okay that is the factors divides into two major heads that is geographical factors and economic factors Now you see here, geographic factors like climate, soil, natural vegetation, water—all these important factors plays a very important role in the distribution of population throughout the world. Similarly, mineral resource, presence of mineral resource, presence of industries, presence of transport facilities, and urbanization as well as, as, well as some government policies controls the population throughout the world. now apart from this we'll see what are the factors affecting growth rate of population but before that we'll try to understand what is growth rate okay we'll understand what is growth rate first now growth rate means here growth rate means that growth rate is the number of person that is added to or may be subtracted so if i say uh, added okay added to a population in a year due to natural increase and net migration okay growth rate means a certain population is added a certain number of person is added to a population that is maybe due to uh, maybe natural increase or due to natural birth or due to migration okay so that is what we call it as growth rate what is growth rate growth rate is the increase in the number of person okay or in a particular population due to natural process that is due to birth and due to migrational activity or due to migration so that is what we call it as growth rate now see this growth rate is affected by these two factors that is birth rate birth rate and death rate and next we have that is migration now we'll try to understand how birth rate or death rate increase or decreases the population now birth rate and death rates are the natural cause of population change okay it is not an artificial it is naturally it happens so birth rate and death rate is a natural process that increases or decreases the population of any region so population increases when the birth rate is more than the death rate it's very simple if the population if the birth rate is more but if the birth rate is more whereas death rate is you know death rate is also where the birth rate is uh, more than the death rate is then the death rate sorry if the birth rate is more than the death rate then the population will increase okay and vice versa we can say now here now what is birth rate first we'll try to understand birth rate is the major or is measured in the number of live birth per 1000 population in a given year so in 1000 population in 1000 of population how many child is born or how many child childs are born so that is what we call birth rate so in 1000 of population in a group of 1000 how many childs are born okay that is what we call birth rate now similarly for death rate similarly for death rate death rate is measured as a number of death per thousand in a given year so for death rate just like birth rate 
in 1000 of population in 1000 of population how many people are how many people dies in 1000 population how many people dies within one year so in a one year in a population of 1000 how many people dies is death rate so in a birth rate in 1000 population how many newborn babies how many uh, babies newborn babies are there in one year so that is what we call birth rate okay so this is how birth rate and death rate is enumerated or calculated now this increase in birth rate or increase in birth rate or decrease in death rate may alter the population of a region like in, in the first case i said when the birth rate is more than the death rate birth rate is more than the death rate population will increase when the death rate is more than the birth rate population will decrease and vice versa we can say right so this is how birth rate and death rate controls the population of any region now difference between birth rate and death rate of a country is also called natural growth rate okay so difference between birth rate and the death rate of any region or of any country is called natural growth rate so underline it this it is there in your book you can underline this what is natural growth rate so difference between birth rate and the death rate so if the birth rate is say for example uh, 24 if the death rate is 15 say for example if the birth rate is 24 and the death rate is 20 so difference is how much 4 that 4 becomes the natural growth rate okay so population increases in the world is mainly due to the rapid increase in this natural growth rate. so if the natural growth rate increases rapidly then the population will also increase in the world okay so this is how birth rate and death rate controls the increase or decrease in the population of a region first factor second one is migration now what is migration migration means simply crossing of the boundary of a political or administrative unit for a certain period of time say for example one if you're living here in place a and this is place b okay this is place b if you're migrating from a to b for certain purpose for some period of time then we call this process of moving from A to B for a certain reason, for a certain period of time. You're going there and living there for more than uh, one year, two years or three years. Then you are migrating from A to B. Okay, That process is called migration. Understanding. So it includes the movement of refugees like refugee, the, the people who lives in a camp, they migrate from one region to the another region like this uh, displaced person and uprooted people as well as economic migrant there are many migrants like from the rural area they migrate to the cities for the purpose of job right they are called economic migrants now migrants migration is the another way by which the population size changes now migration also increase or decrease the population of any reason like i was given example of place a now this is place b okay so when a person when 1000 people migrate from place a to place b say for example place a b has 1000 population now 1000 population migrates from a to b then here the population of place b will become 2000 that means moving people moving from a to b will also change the population of place b now obviously the population of place we place a will also change here the population will decrease say for example the population was 2000 in this place now when 1000 people migrate from a to b then the population at a will be 1000 and population at b will be 2000 because 1000 is added here so population at place a as well as place b will change if the people migrate from one place to the another place okay so this is how migration also alters the the, the move uh, alters the population or it it affect the population of any reason now there are two terms related to it emigrant immigration and emigration 
now sorry it's uh, immigration emigration and it should be immigration sorry is by mistake i've written immigration it should be i double m i okay here it should be i double m i here also some mistake is there i and i is there so it should be i double m i creation immigration okay immigration the other first one is emigration or out migration and the next one is immigration i double m i okay now we'll try to understand immigration emigration and immigration emigration means moving out from one region to the other region if you are say for example if you are a resident of siliguri if you live in siliguri you went to kolkata for the purpose of work okay like you are raman for example you are raman so raman your mic raman is migrating from siliguri to kolkata okay so raman what is what is uh, raman is Ra what raman is doing raman is emigrate emigrate emigrating means he is moving from siliguri to kolkata he is doing out migration he lives in siliguri so he goes there in kolkata because uh, Kol kolkata for the purpose of job so he is emigrating so moving out okay that is called emigration so one more people live in say for example say for, for example you have uh, ritesh ritesh live here so ritesh lives in kolkata now ritesh want to come to siliguri for the purpose of business if he come to this place okay now this place siliguri is experiencing immigration means coming to this place is immigration okay emigration is moving out from the region and emigration is coming to your region like say for example foreigners are coming to india for the purpose of uh, tourism so they are emigrating i w m i immigrating or emigrating and say for example from india people are migrating to the foreign countries that is emigration so hope you have understood the concept of emigration and immigration so this two uh, process of movement like emigration and immigration also alters the population of any region okay okay moving on to the next topic that is the difference between emigrants and immigrants now what is the difference between these two immigrants is a person who leaves his own country immigrant is a person who leaves his own country to leave another country say for example i live in india if i go to usa and settle there so i become an immigrant okay and immigrant is a person who moves to a new country to live there okay immigrant is a person who moves to a new country hmm to live there if he moves from his country uh, sorry for example if immigrant is a person who moves to a new country to live there if he is moving to a new country to live there so that is what we call immigrants an immigrant is a person who mig emigrates means moving from who does out migration an immigrant is a person who emigrates immigrates means just moving uh, coming within in that particular in that particular country itself an immigrant li uh, leaves their own country immigrant immigrant come to our our country okay like i in case we say like foreigner are coming to our countries they are, they becomes immigrants and like for example if i am moving to the other country for for me i become for india i become immigrants immigrants okay like from india if i go to usa i become immigrant for india okay and for india if other people are coming to india then they become an immigrants okay so this is how we can differentiate between immigrants and immigrants hope you have understood now next topic that is understanding composition of population now understanding composition of population now what is composition of population for first we'll see this 
Now, population composition is the description of a population according to the characteristics such as age, sex, marital status, socioeconomic status, literacy, occupation, language, and religion. So, say for example, this is the population of a region. Now, population composition means when we study the age of this population, means what age group of people live in this po population, what is the marital status of this population, means in this population how many people are married, how many people are unmarried and if we see the uh, socioeconomic aspect of this population, status of this population, whether they are economically or socially they are developed or not, okay, uh, whether uh, about literacy whether this population the group of people are literate or not whether how many people are working how how many people have their occupation what type of language they speak what type of religion they believe so etc so studying all these elements okay is also to, on totality it is called as population composition okay population composition is the description of any population that is according to the characteristics such as age, sex, marital status, socioeconomic status, literacy, occupation, language and religion. Now first we will see, first we will start with the uh, first uh, the characteristics that is sex, uh, sorry that is age. Now based on age population can also be studied. Okay. We can study the characteristics of a population based on the age group. Say for example, now in this particular chapter, like in this particular uh, uh, chapter we have, uh, we will be studying only age, sex and literacy level. Others like marital status, socioeconomic status, occupation, language and religion will not be studying on this background. We will be studying only based on the age, sex and literacy level. So first we will start with age composition. Now age composition, the population is divided into three main age group. They are 0 to 14 years of age, 15 to 64 years of age and 64, 65 and above. Okay, in India, let us consider in India, this group of that is 0 to 14 is considered as children age group. So in India, this comprises about 34 percent. This is important to note. 34 percent of the population in India consists of the children age group. Okay, that is of total population of India, 34 percent is the children age group in India, and 15 to 64. This group consists of working population. That is, the people lying in this age group, 15 to 64 years of age, all of these people works right. This, so, in India, we consider them as working age group. Uh, they, they are working population. So in India, this group comprises 61 percent. So you can say 61 percent of the population in India is working, they belong to working age group. Now we have next that is 65 and above. This group consists of the old people, all the old people lie in this group. So in India, in this age comprises of only 5 percent we have. 5 percent of people in India we have 65 and above of the total population of the country. Okay. <clears throat> now here important to note this first two that is uh, 0 to 14 and 65 and above these two age groups are dependent population because they do not work, children do not work right. 65 and above age group they are the old age people so they do not work, they do not go for working, uh, they, not, they do not earn for living. So these two age groups are dependent population. Okay, so remember this, the first and the third group that is 0 to 14 and 65 and above, they belong to dependent population, okay, they depend on whom, they depend on working population. Okay, moving on to the next one that is, next topic that is sex composition. Now what is it, we will see this sex composition or the sex ratio. Now sex ratio is used to describe number of female per 1000 male. In 1000 male, how many females are there? So it is simply the ratio of female per 1000 male. Okay. 
So, as per the 2011 census of India, it says that 940 females per thousand male means in India there are 940 female out of 1000 male. So, if there is 1000 male then in India there are 940 females. Okay. This is the survey based on the census 2011. So, the sex ratio of India is 8 was sorry 8 was so, the sex ratio of India was 940 is to 1000. This is the sex ratio of India as per the 2011 data. Now, the sex ratio has changed. Now, <coughs> see in the developing countries, the sex ratio is in the favor, sorry, in the developed country, not developing. In the developed country like USA, Canada, Australia, the sex ratio are in the favor of females, means most of them they are females there. Okay. In, in like in respect of males like if I say 1000 male in 1000 of male say for example 1000 of female say for example 1000 of female there are only 900 or less than that 900 males are there so that means the female population is more in the developed countries especially in the Asian countries male outnumber females especially Asian countries like China uh, Japan, India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, in these countries, what happens? The number of male is more compared to the female. This is due to the uh, lack of women education, cultural, some cultural practices and the position of the women in the society. So, due to all these factors, the sex ratio in the Asian countries is very less. That means, female population is very less in the developing countries like uh, India and Bangladesh. Okay. Now, moving on to the next one that is literacy level. Now, literacy level means the ability, literacy means the ability to read and write with some understanding. Any person who is able to read or able to write something with his understanding, so that is what we call literacy, that person is literate, right? So, the socio and social and economic development or economic and social development of a country totally depends on to a great extent on the literacy level of its population. If that population is literate, then the economic and social development will take place. Okay, economically or socially that, that particular uh, country will progress. So, higher level of a level of literacy is associated with high economic development and social development. Okay? So, literacy level are generally high in developed countries. So, low in underdeveloped countries. Very true. Countries like Canada, USA, they have high literacy level. They are developed countries. Countries like India, Bangladesh, Pakistan, they have low literacy level, they are under, most of them, they are underdeveloped except India, Bangladesh is underdeveloped, so they have a low literacy level. Now, level, literacy level also varies with country, within a country, okay, within a country itself, the literacy level is different. If I say, if I talk about the states like, uh, you say, Rajasthan, states like, uh, some part of UP, okay, in the remote areas of UP, you see the literacy level is very low. Whereas states like Kerala have the highest literacy level, that is 93.91 percent. Within the urban and the rural areas, the literacy level is vast difference. In the urban areas, the literacy level is very high. Whereas in the rural areas, the literacy level is very low. So, depending on the places within, the, uh, depending on the region within the country, the level of literacy is very different. Okay. So, all this, you, uh, the what I mean to say is literacy level of a region controls, uh, literacy level of any country controls the social and economic development of a region. Okay. So, we can say that literacy label, studying literacy label, we can study the population, the characteristics of the population of that particular country. So, rest uh, that is 
the population pyramid will be discussing in the next class for today we'll conclude after this if you have any kind of doubt related to the topic i've taught till now you can ask me or feel free to ask me anytime thank you all of you